but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very same time, and they all inspected our uh, building. They, they ha I have a document here that says uh, that someone complained. The hate of the KKK. You, you the one promote hate, and so does John Robinson. It's well, not us. Religions. It's not us. Belligerent BTW. <laughs> Look, get that out of my face. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. Now, sir, you're with the news media network, and you understand what touching the camera is. Are you with the and I know what I'm... No one hit me that fool. Don't, don't do so it. So you're not with the I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible, but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very same time, and they all inspected our uh, building. They, they ha I have a document here that says uh, that someone complained. The hate of the KKK. You, you the one promote hate, and so does John Robinson. It's well, not us. Religions. It's not us. Belligerent BTW. <laughs> Look, get that out of my face. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. Now, sir, you're with the news media network, and you understand what touching the camera is. Are you with the and I know what I'm... Network? No one hit me that fool. Don't, don't do so it. So you're not with a Christian podcast network? I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible, but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very same time, and they all inspected our uh, building. They, they ha I have a document here that says uh, that someone complained. The hate of the KKK. You, you the one promote hate, and so does John Robinson. It's well, not us. Religions. It's not us. Belligerent BTW. <laughs> So it, it, look, get that out of my face. Really? Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. Now, sir, you're with the news media network, and you understand what touching the camera is. Are you with the and I know what I'm... Network? No one hit me that fool. Don't, don't do so it. So you're not with the podcast network? I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible, but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. 
Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very... The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Word from the Lord. James over here with you. I want to just begin by starting off with a video clip and letting you uh, hear it. Just kind of a springboard, and then we'll get into our regular uh, uh, lesson here. I want to know in the Bible where you find that it says not to use musical instruments. When he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, he didn't say just sing a jo joyful noise, did he? Ma'am, have you been watching our program all night? Yeah, I have, and getting mad at the minute. Well, let me ask you this. Are you, can I ask you, and you be honest with me, are you a Baptist? Absolutely, I'm a Baptist. All right, now now watch what I'm going to do, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to be kind. I just want us to reason together, okay? I don't want you to be mad at me. I just want us to reason, okay? I don't want to reason. I just want you to answer well, my question. you're right. You don't want to reason. All right, my, my answer to your question is, if you're a Baptist, then you recognize that there's nowhere in the Bible that it says not to sprinkle. But would you affirm that sprinkling is okay? No, but... Wait, 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 ma'am. You just killed yourself right there. Oh, shut up. Have somebody telling you it's a tent? No, but nobody argue more than a tent. Okay, well, fine. Now it's your turn to answer our question. Are you in the Baptist church? I'm in a Baptist church. That's what I thought. you and your fat boy are both on your way to hell. Let's wait. Yeah. Hey. I'm wrong to a Baptist church. You're wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, I know I'm wrong, Chip. <laughs> but uh, this Sunday, it, it get a little bit colder. Yeah. If I believe Johnny Roberts, I'll take every Bible I got in the house and go down there and start a fire with it. If I believe what that, that he preaches, I would. I'll take every Bible I got and go down there and start a fire with every one of them and never hit, hit another church door in my life that I believe what that thing preaches. And you are a money-grubbing, lying hypocrite. How do you think? Tell me why she get on there and, and uh, he get on there and he's got an attitude problem. You know, uh, a preacher don't have an attitude problem like that thing guy. I mean, I'm sound and all. I mean, he, I mean, I done got hot with him, yeah. you know. What, what is it about Johnny that does this to you? <clears throat> uh, oh, shut up. Johnny Robert, that man is the blind, is legally blind, he's 75, is going to fall in hell with him. Snugly, superior. Is anybody in your rotten church ever matched Mother Teresa? If I ever catch one of my kids in your church, I'll stomp a mud hole in them so deep, they'll never be able to get up and walk out. You get saved, that's a bunch of hogwash. I mean, you, you sound like you can go ahead and scream, get, get it out of you. What, what does he do to you? He does he explains the Bible the way he wants it. All right. That thing sitting inside of you ain't nothing but a hypocrite. He's going to bust hell wide open. Mm. Ma'am, have you been watching our program all night? Yeah, I have. been getting mad at the minute. Yeah, but where do you get that, dog? Uh, just only the uh, church of Christ is going to heaven. Well, I get it. There's Christian people in all churches. God is not going to just pick one church. Well, I, I feel sorry for you. Well, he I don't know where you're getting that junk from. I, you're not reading out the Bible like we, like we do. Well, Why is he going around teaching this and teaching that when he better be teaching his own self how to go to heaven? Okay, well, fine. Now it's your turn to answer our question. Are you in a Baptist church? I'm in a Baptist church. That's what I thought. You and your fat boy are both on your way to hell. That's where y'all live. Oh. Yeah, you a fat boy. I, I, didn't thought, I you. thought you didn't. I thought you wanted to judge. Thank you very much. Do so you believe in judging? I don't judge you. Well, I you hate just, you. You just did. Did you say that again? I said I hate you. Thank you. Thank you. Who is that? The preachers are not afraid of you. Now, you are challenging the preachers, but... Let me say to you, you, the preachers know that you're a novice. You call him a coward, but you're being a coward. If I could meet him face to face, 
I'd show him what a coward was. What'd you do to him? I'd beat his head in. Mm. How do you feel inside about Johnny Robertson? I despise him. Look here. But you know what I think? Is this scripture? Is this scripture? Yeah, well, all you like is the horn. I think he is too faced. I think he's building an occult church. Here Sir, is that... Oh, shut up. If I show you... And the... also, you are not supposed to talk about the Holy Ghost. If you don't know nothing about it, you should just keep your mouth shut about it. Ma'am? Ma'am? I, I feel sorry can for you, y'all. Can you let me talk now? I heard that you get me you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be off the air. So what does it all say? Yes, why didn't you go with Johnny? Now, what you're doing is segregating. You're saying, yada, yada, yada. This, this is my religion. is the only one right. Most of the time, when I see... His church on the TV? station, I just want to turn it off. Okay. But tonight he seems like he's human. He's not just judging everything that comes down the pike. Um, Charles, I believe Pastor Oldfield's going to have to carry this load by itself. I'll tell you why I say that. All right. Because uh, everybody but the church group that they belong to is going to hell anyway. Including Billy Graham. All right, let's call before we take a break. Hello. Um, I just got a question. I mean, God might be like against homosexuality, but ain't God against people judging people and people pointing the finger at people and stuff like that? Ain't God against that too? You mean like me? People like me? Yeah, like you. Mm -hmm. I, well, pointing I, the finger at people, talking about people. Ain't you standing right now? What you doing? Well, what talking are you? About people what? Pointing the finger? Now, can I respond, please? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Now, what? So, what are you doing to me? Are you pointing your finger at I'm me? I'm asking a question. Are you judging me? I'm asking a question. Well, I'm saying, are you talking about me? And you said yes. So, are I you? Said people. Are you? And I said, are you talking about people well, like okay, me? Yeah. You can say I'm talking about you. All right. So now, are you doing to me what you say I shouldn't be doing to other people? Boy, that, that don't make it right, though, do it. I think you and Johnny has come to town to stir the people up, and I think you're wrong, and I hope God will forgive. You. You know, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? It tells me that you are a judgmental, hypocritical, so far from being a Christian, that Jesus what? himself would walk right by you. If I have to spend my last penny, get you off the air, because you are a harm and a bad name for right. Christianity. Right. Much less humanity. Hey, man. Hey. I guess you think you're perfect, don't you? Don't be using that language on the show. You are just impossible to talk to. Okay. That is a, I, I think, a pretty good uh, representation of what people, how people feel about us and uh, obviously what they've said about us. And the question that I want to ask tonight, I'm going to forego giving the content information until the end, but the question that I want to ask is really this. Why do the heathen rage? Why, what is making people so mad? I mean, over the course of the years, we've had individuals, you, you heard it there, call us names, call us bad names, we're, call, we're coming to stir up the people. But what is it that's really making these people so angry. Uh, Mark was playing some, some uh, video of uh, Larry Serber earlier, you know, and he just, like, angry against God and, 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 and blaspheming against God, which I, I know that a lot of that is he just does it for shock effect. <clears throat> but what is it that makes people so furious and, and just so filled with, with vile and, 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 and hatred toward us? I mean, why is it that, that, they, that they call in and, and say these things? Why is it that they, they write in with emails? I, I could show you emails. I could show you some things where, you know, people said that, um, uh, you know, that we, we are scared to debate. This is from a uh, signed a Pentecostal tongue speaker. Well, anybody knows that's watched this program, we're not afraid to debate anybody. It's, they're the ones who are afraid. But yet when we, when we make that uh, uh, advertisement or when we make that challenge or when we offer that, you know, then we're bad. We're stirring up people. We're, we're causing division. We're segregating people. Why is it people are so angry? I can show you another video, uh, 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 email. In this email, 
uh, someone, this guy just calls the cult, you know, and we're not like mainstream uh, Christianity, mainline Christianity. Well, what is mainline Christianity? What is mainline Christianity? He lists a whole bunch of people there and says, well, you're more like them, but you're not like mainline Christianity. Well, most of those names that he listed, I would say most people would consider mainline Christianity. So what is it that's making people so, so angry? What, what's getting them so upset? Listen to this. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 24, the context is the apostles and the early Christians <clears throat> were going about preaching the gospel. And uh, uh, Peter and, and the apostles, they were, they were cast in prison, or they were, they were told not to preach. They were told not to preach. Maybe we should just put the context up here and just read some of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And notice what, uh, notice what they said about him. Acts chapter 4. Then spake the people unto the priest... Then they spake the people unto the people. Then, he, then as they spake unto the people, excuse me, I'll get it right. I'm going to have to read it over here because I, I don't think I can see through this uh, camera. I can't see my uh, uh, monitor here. As they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now notice the reaction to the preaching. The, the audience, a lot of part of the audience was, was being grieved. The religious leaders were being grieved that the apostles were doing the teaching. Well, that sounds like what we're doing. People are getting grieved. They're being upset because of what we're preaching. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day for it was eventide. Uh, Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass in the Mara that, uh, that their rulers and the elders and the scribes and, Anna, and Annas, the high priest, and Cephas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, they asked, by what power or what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if, this, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. And this is the stone which will set it not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in the other. There, uh, for there is none other name given under heaven, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. <clears throat> Verse 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing by them, they could say nothing against it. Now notice, all of this, they're questioning them. They're grieved at what's being taught, but yet they can't respond to it. They just don't know what to say other than get mad. Now, doesn't that sound like people today? The only thing they can do is get mad. And the question I'm asking is, is why? Why? And when they commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do with these men, to these men, for what? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Friends, listen. I think the honest people, even the enemies, have to agree that we really haven't done anything bad. Remember, they were questioning Peter and John for a good deed they'd done. And so what we have done, we've actually tried to demonstrate that the church of Christ is a, a, a group of people who are doing good things. In the community, look, we're opposing, we're opposing the, the, uh, uh, the things that divide and segregate our society. We are opposed to the nation of Islam, just like we're opposed to the KKK, because white supremacists and black supremacists both are wrong. Both are in error. And we're saying we all can be one, we all can get along, whether it be yellow, red, black, white, green, orange, whatever. We can all get together as human beings 
and worship God as he directed. And for some reason now, for some reason, people are just upset about that because we're preaching a way in which we can bring people together. Now, one of the things in the, uh, one of the themes, I guess maybe the theme of the, of the tent meeting this year is the idea that things that seem backward may be the very things that work, you know? And I don't want to spoil the, the, uh, the, the commercial that's going to be running. I don't think we have it yet. But it's the idea that most people will recognize that debate and discussion works in areas like politics, if you go to the school board, if you go and, and to the, uh, uh, the, the board of supervisors, or if you go to uh, uh, some kind of any other event, discussion and, and debate actually works, except when it comes to discussing the Bible. All of a sudden, no, that's backwards. You can't do that. Well, friends, how about this? How about we try doing what we know works in other areas of life and try it with the Bible? Instead of getting mad at us, instead of getting frustrated with us and calling us names, why rage? Why get so angry about it? Because notice this, that's what they did in Acts 4. In Acts 4, they said, we can't deny that this was a good thing. They said, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak uh, henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them and said, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. Now, friends, here's my point. Really lay something to our charge that we have done that's so bad. Just name someone. Someone call in. Are the, phone, are the phones working? Uh, someone call in and tell us one thing that we've done that's so bad, so heinous, so, so terrible that people rage against us. Uh, I don't think this phone here is even working, Matt. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's even plugged in. But, 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 but tell us something, something that's, uh, something that's so heinous. Why is it so bad? Now, if you're watching online, by the way, let me just stop and say this. If you're watching online, you can call in at 888-400-3801. At uh, because we're, we're on the, uh, uh, the radio as well and uh, over the Internet, Internet radio. And uh, we, are, we want you to, to call in, so we're going to give you that. I heard it click there. Uh, you can call in. All right. Uh, yeah, there it is. There it is. 336-336. 336-484-8050 or 231-425-6044. I'm going to get those numbers a little closer to me uh, later on. But there, there's the numbers. And so you can, you can call. Just call in and ask, what, what's one thing that the Church of Christ has done that is so terrible, so heinous? Because we're being accused of being so bad, so we're going to get y'all off the air. We hate y'all. You know, we, we, we'd, uh, I'd beat his head in and, and curse us out. What have we done that's so bad? I, can, I, I just wonder what is it that, that makes people so angry about what we're doing? What is it that, that stirs up the people? Now, listen, one of the ladies that called in, or one of the callers that called in, said, uh, said uh, we're stirring up the people. But look what Peter and the other people said about the reaction that they got. When they were preaching the gospel, listen to what they said about these people. They said, they said, uh, uh, and when they had heard, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why do the he did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? What is it that's causing people to be upset? What is it that's causing people to, to threaten? Do you realize, friends, that we have been threatened uh, by being shot? Brother Johnny Robertson has been threatened to be shot. I think Brother uh, Jason Harrison, before he uh, uh, went off and, and apostatized, he was threatened. The guy called on and said he'd, he'd, he'd put slugs in his chest. Uh, been, been threatened in the, in the sense of... Uh, verbally abused. We've been to, to uh, Pentecostal churches in Martinsville, have people spit on us, uh, get in our face, uh, threaten us. We've been threatened with lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, caught, drug into, into, into court. 
What is it that we're doing that's so bad? Simply be asking a question. Simply by asking people to say, you know, will you please give, give an answer? Or why is it that you're doing these things? You know, what is it that's, that's, that's got people so riled up? And so that's all I'm asking. Why, why, why do the people, why are they raging? Notice this. I want you to look at this. In Luke 6 and verse 11, and I think maybe we should put, I'll put this up here so we can put it in, in the context. But Luke chapter 6, let's just notice what's going on. It came to pass the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfield and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, why do, why do you that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering uh, them said, Have you not read as so much uh, as this, that what David did when he himself was unhungered, and they which were with him, and how he went into the, the house of God, and did take and eat of the showbread, and gave also to them that were with him, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone? Verse 5, And he said unto them, That the Son of Man is the, also the Lord of the Sabbath. And it came to pass on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogues and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and, uh, what, and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. Now look, they're watching to see if he will do a good thing so they can accuse him. That's exactly what they were going to do to Peter and the apostles in Acts 4. So what good thing have we done that is causing people to be so upset, okay? Here we go. You're on the word. Well, we're on the word from the Lord. All right, so, so what is it? Now notice this. They're looking to find out a way to accuse Jesus. Verse 8. And he knew their thoughts, and he said unto the man which had withered his hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then Jesus said unto him, unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Can you imagine, friends, being so angry at someone who's doing good that you want to destroy them, that you want to kill them, that you want to crucify them, that you want to punish them, you want to beat them, you want to threaten them because they're doing good. Again, friends, name one thing, name one thing that we have done that is so heinous, that is so terrible that we need to be off the air. Name one thing that is so uh, uh, dastardly that, that, we, that we need to be expelled. You know, I have people all the time call Charles, Charles, why do y'all let them on the air? Why do you let them on the air? What have we done that's so bad? What have we done that's so bad? You know, we're basically just, to me, I think we're helping the economy. You know, we're buying airtime. We're buying airtime, and that helps pay uh, people's salaries. See, that work at the TV station, that helps, that helps uh, uh, them then be able to provide for their families. I say we're doing a good job. You know, we're not, we're not mooching off the society. We're not cranking out these begathons like the, like the uh, Church of God, Ridgeway Church of God used to do. See, we're not, we're not taking money from the community. What are we doing that's so bad? Our tent meetings, our tent meetings, we, we give away information. You know, we never pass the bucket. We never pass the plate. What are we doing that's so bad? Why do people hate us so much? Why, why do the heathen rage? What, what are we doing that's so bad? See that? It must be we're doing something good because the, the, the theme seems to be with Jesus, they were mad at him for doing something good. With Peter and John, they were mad at him for doing something good. Well, we must be doing something good for people to be so angry with us. Okay? You want a word from the Lord? Yes, hi, James. Uh, I don't think it's that y'all do anything bad. I think that Majority of them mean, kind of mean well, but they're just scared. They're they're uh, afraid that they've been wasting all their uh, time with these so-called preachers, where they're teaching that they're not accepting the truth that y'all y'all write from the Bible. Okay, so if we're not doing anything bad, then we have to be doing what? 
Well, it has to be something good we're doing, right? Yeah, you're teaching the, you're putting the fear in the the, the truth. I mean, okay. they they're scared and and they're either fight or flight. You know. Right. I I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it I think it hits home with people, and uh, you know it 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 shows them the truth, and so they're either, they're going to have to make a choice. And they're, I don't think all of them mean bad towards y'all. It's just it's fight or flight, and they've been wasting all their years going to these so-called preachers that they grew up with. Okay. All right. Well, but thank you. All right. I appreciate your call. Appreciate your program. All right. All right. I think the caller hit it on the head. I think that's exactly right. When people when people see the truth, and you'll, you'll see the pattern here, with Jesus, they saw the truth. They saw that he was doing something good, and they wanted to see if he would do something good so they could accuse him. Can you imagine that? I just find it hard to believe we're going to wait to see if he'll do something good. Just, just do something good so we can accuse you of doing it. Make something, make something bad out of it. All right? So, so that they're looking for something uh, to, uh, to accuse him of. And the Bible says they were filled with rage, filled with madness. Can you imagine getting so angry at someone doing something good that you just want to plot to say, what can we do to what, what can we What can we do to kill him? Now, notice, I want you to consider this. Some lady said that we were uh, stirring up something. In Luke 23, Luke 23, the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him. We found this fellow perverting the nation and uh, forbidding to give uh, tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. All right? He wasn't doing anything bad. Therefore, he had to be doing something good. You know, if you're not doing something bad, it must be okay. It must be good. And notice this. And they were the more Fierce. They were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people. They accused him of stirring up the people. What had he done? What had he done? Had to be something good. He was stirring up the people. He's stirring up the people, teaching them something good. Now, friends, think about that. Is that really why people are upset with us? Are they accusing us of stirring up the people by preaching something good? by preaching something that's right from the Bible, that's preaching something that we insist comes from the Bible and that, and simply because we insist that if you're going to believe something, then it needs to come from the Bible. Is that, is that so bad? Is that what's making you mad? I think the caller was spot on. I think it's exactly right. People recognize that it's the truth and they're either going to have to accept it or they're going to have to fight against it. And they choose to fight. You know what, friends? I don't think we're doing something bad. I don't think we're the ones stirring up the people. I don't think that you should be filled with mad uh, madness. I don't think you should be filled with rage. I don't think you should be filled with hatred toward us. Because what we're doing is something good, okay? You're on the word, my Lord. Yes, yeah. yes, hello? You're on the air. Yes, uh... I think that man that called in, he was a hundred percent right. Uh, he, uh, what they hate about what y'all doing, they know y'all are telling the truth, and they don't want to hear that. Straight about that tithe and stuff. They, uh, that's what he is. They don't want to hear uh, the memo to her about the preacher begging for money and all that, all that stuff is not in the Bible. And they don't want y'all to tell it nobody that. But that man that called in. Was a dead on the money. He was hundred percent right. That's what they get mad about, or they know y'all telling the truth. Okay. Right. All right. I I, th I think I think we're in agreement on that. Um. Now I hope I hope that you and I can walk together in agreement. Are we in agreement on everything? Caller. Hello, caller. Are you there? Okay. I think he hung up. Uh, see, my, my, my question is now, a lot of people are calling in saying, well, y'all, y'all 100% right. Okay. 
I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad that you we're in agreement that far. But if we're 100 percent right, are you 100 percent with us? See that? Now, now for, for you folks on the radio, well, I'm smiling. See, I'm, I'm I'm being nice here. And if you want to call in, if you're if you're listening on the radio, if you want to call in 888 400. 3801, 888-400-3801. And so what we need, to, we need to stop and consider, all right, are we, are we uh, provoking people because we're doing something good? Listen to this. In Acts 26 and verse 11, listen to how the apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus at the time. Now, in Acts 26, he's Paul and he's telling what he did, but listen to what he says about himself. I'm going to pull this up on the, on the, uh, uh, on the Bible program so we can read it all together. Uh, let's just start. Let's just start here in verse uh, 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 9. Paul says, I verily thought with myself, this is before he obeyed the gospel, he said, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing also I uh, uh, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them and punished them off in every synagogue. Now listen, and compelled them to blaspheme. He's forcing them to blaspheme. He's he's putting he's putting the uh, I don't know. He, he might have took him down to Gitmo or something and waterboarded him, I guess. I don't know. But he was forcing them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against him. Listen to that. Exceedingly mad against him, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Saul of Tarsus so hated these Christians. He said, I was exceedingly mad. What was it that was making them so, him up so mad at, at these Christians? What was it? See, friends, that is what we're, we're trying to deal with. That word, exceedingly mad, is to rage at. He was, I was raging at them. You know, and I just don't understand that. We get people, uh, call, like I said, calling in. They're, they're full of rage, full of rage. You're haters. Y'all are haters. No, not, not us. You know, getting all loud and bullshit. No, we're, we're trying to keep calm here. People say, well, y'all could have been killed. Y'all could have been shot. This preacher could have killed you. What was it, who was the guy that uh, ran, ran Micah out and run the devil out wearing overalls? Andrew? Ronnie Andrew. Ronnie Andrew, you know. I run the devil out of my church. Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? We're out door knocking in the, in the man down in Mayadan, Right? He's, he's yelling and screaming across the street. Why are you so angry? Why are you so upset? We've been door knocking in Eden. Man comes out on the, uh, uh, meets at the sidewalk. Stop putting this junk on my door. These people are idiots. And I said, well, I'm the guy you're talking about. Can we just talk? Well, he went back in the house when he realized that I was the one he was bad-mouthing. He's, he's fine to bad-mouth him when he thought he was bad-mouthing me behind my back. Now, what, what, what gets you so exceedingly mad? It must be, friends. It must be, friends, that something is getting to you. Listen to this. Are, are people getting mad? Are, are the heathen, and I'd say that like the Bible says, if you're not, if you're not saved, you're a heathen. If, are the heathen mad because they're not spoken favorably of like Ahab? You know, Ahab, Ahab got mad. Ahab got mad because, because uh, uh, whenever he called a prophet from the Lord, he got mad because he knew that what was going to be said was not going to be in his favor. Let's look at this. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 22, and we're going to, we're going to start in about verse, uh, uh, let's, let's start in verse uh, 5. Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, now Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah, the southern kingdom, and he's talking to Ahab, the king of Israel, the northern kingdom. And he said, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Because Jehoshaphat, the king of the, the southern kingdom, Judah, was going to go to battle with Ahab, the king of the northern, the northern kingdom. 
which is Israel. And he said, you know, we, we want to make sure, what, we want to get God's uh, mind on this, so let's, let's inquire at the word of the Lord. Let's see what that is. And the king of Israel, that's Ahab, gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? Or shall I forbear? And they said, and they said unto him, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. All right? Go up to the, deliver it to the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not yet a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Now see, Jehoshaphat realized all these prophets, they weren't really telling the truth. They were just telling what people wanted to hear. Friends, that's like these denominational preachers. That's what these churches of men, these preachers in these churches of men say. They'll tell you what you want to hear. They'll tell you what you want to hear. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, now watch this, Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of uh, Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I hate him. For he doth not prophesy, listen, he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Now, why would Ahab say that what Micaiah is saying is not good? Why would he say it's evil? Why would he say, I hate him because I know what he's going to say? Friends, I think that's where people are today. They turn on, what does the Bible say, a word from the Lord? They turn, they turn on these programs and they say, you know what, I hate these folks because I know what they're going to say. I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, you you got to be in this one kind of church to be saved. Friends, that's what the Bible says. See, I hate those folks because they say, you can't, you can't use all these mechanical instruments of music and worship. I hate them for that. Well, that's just what the Bible says. Why are you hating me for that? Why are you hating me for that? Listen, Jehoshaphat said, don't, don't say that. Don't, don't be mad just because someone is going to say something that that might make you upset. So he said, don't let it say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten thither, Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat on each his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And uh, they're, wa they're waiting for Micaiah. And Zedekiah, the son of, uh, of Chinnamah, uh, Chenaya made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus said the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver into the king's hand. Now verse 14, 13, The messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth, with one mouth, let Thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them that speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And of course, if you read the context, you know that what Micaiah said to Ahab was not a good message. He said, You can go on up, but you're going to die. If you go up, you will die. Now, friends, I, I would say that's not a good message to hear. That wouldn't be a pleasant message, let's say. But you know what? It really would be a good message. If you didn't know that you, if you went up to a place and you was going to die, wouldn't it be good to know that? See, friends, wouldn't it be good to know something so that you can plan ahead? You know, sometimes people say, well, ignorance is bliss. Well, I don't think so. You, you're going to think ignorance is bliss. Someone tells you, well, you know, all this storm that we just had tonight, there's a tree down, there's a tree down, and uh, if, you, if you go down this road, you're going to hit it. Well, don't you think that's good to know? But what if you were going down the road, and all of a sudden, boom, you hit this tree? You'd say, well, man, I wish somebody told me that. Or what if someone said, if you go down this road, the bridge is out. If you go down the road, you'll die. Well, that's not a pleasant message, 
But it's a good message because you're telling someone the truth. You're telling someone in advance what they need to hear. Now, friends, let's think about this. Why do you get mad at someone for giving you information that could actually help you? See, again, let's go back to the tent. The tent meeting, the theme of the tent meeting is let's go forward by going back to the Bible. Let's get some information. Let's get some information that will help you to achieve the unity that God desires. Let's give you some information that will help you down the road. Why do you want to fight the truth? See, some of you go, well, I hate y'all because y'all tell me the truth. No, friends, that's backwards. You should be hating the people that are lying to you. You should be hating the people that aren't telling you the truth. You should be hating the people that aren't telling you what the Bible says. You should be hating the people that aren't giving you a word from the Lord. You should be hating the people that are telling you, oh, once saved, always saved, just go your merry way. You ought to be mad at those people. You ought to be mad at the person that's telling you you don't have to do anything to be saved. You just call and say a little prayer, even though it's not in the Bible, and be saved. You know what? I would be mad if I found out that someone told me all I have to do is say a little prayer and be saved, and then I found out that that's not even in the Bible. Now, that's who you ought to get mad at. Don't get mad at us. Are you, are you mad because... We're not speaking favorably. You know, some people say, well, y'all get mad. Y'all just run down all these different churches and y'all just, you know, y'all just stir up. You know what, friends? It may not be pleasant, and it's not. It may not be pleasant to talk about the churches of men that have been established and started because men don't want to follow God's word. It's not pleasant. But you know what? It's good. It's a good thing to talk about the religions that are contrary to, to what the Bible says. That's a good thing. Now, if you're mad because we don't speak favorably of, of your preacher who's telling you wrong, if we don't speak favorably of your favorite uh, preacher that you watch on TV because he's telling you wrong, if you're upset or you're mad because we're exposing all the corruption that's going on in religion, if that's why you're mad, then, well, you just want to stay mad. But if you're mad because you see it's the truth, well, friends, I think we can help you. See, wh why are you mad? Why are you mad? Now, are they mad? Or maybe it's because they're mad because they see the truth but do not like it. Now, friends, I, that's, that's what the callers, both, both callers came in and said. Both callers we've had tonight have said, you know what, I think they're mad because they see the truth and they're going to fight against it. Friends, do you realize that in the Bible there's people who got mad because they heard the truth? Notice this in Acts chapter Acts chapter seven. Well, let's just stay right here where we are. Matthew twenty one. Matthew twenty one verse forty five. Jesus is giving some parables. He's telling a parable. And notice the conclusion when he gave this parable. And when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. You know, friends, we get told a lot of times, and even by, even by some, some, some of our brethren, that I say are weak brethren, if they think that it is mean or cruel to tell someone that they're lost. But look at this. You can say the truth and... It doesn't take people too long before they perceive what the truth is. Jesus did not call these people by name. Now, he had before, and he will again. In, in Matthew 23, he gets, he gets down hard on them. But look, these people put together, he's talking about us. Now, friends, I want to make sure you know that I'm talking about you if you're in a man-made church. I don't want to leave any fudge room. I, I don't want to leave any doubt to the imagination whether you understood what I said or not. And so, you know, you can perceive some things based upon what we teach. Because some of you do. You know, people calling all the time and say, well, you're saying I'm going to hell. I, I, you don't, I may not have even said those words. I might not even said anything to I know I could play a video of a man that called and said, you tell my grandmother's going to hell. I didn't even talk about his grandmother. I don't know who his grandmother is. How do I know, how do I know who his grandmother is? But you see what he did? He perceived something. He perceived the truth, and that's what made him mad. 
That's what got him upset. Now, friends, if you see the truth, if you see the truth and it's making you mad, now, you need to recognize that you're going to have to do something. Notice this. In Acts chapter 7, sorry about that. In Acts chapter 7, there was a group of people that were listening to Stephen preach. And Stephen gets through, he comes down to the end of his sermon, and look what he says. He says, Ye stiff-necked, uncircumcised heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets hath not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers? Now look, the betrayers, and murderers, and what do they do? And uh, uh, who have received the who have to receive the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it? And when they heard these things, now watch it. When they heard these things, they were cut to their heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Why were they mad? Friends, you know why they were mad? Because they knew that he was exactly right. And that's why people rage. That's why the heathen rage. That's why we had all those people that called in. I put all those calls together. That's why, that's why they rage. Because they recognize the truth. And it gets under their skin. It's irritating them. The man that called in and told... John Robertson, he said, I, I, you know, when are you going to die? Hoping you die. You know why? The truth is getting to that person. When the people call in and hate us, that's what I just remind myself. You know what? I just remind myself, James, you're doing a good job of telling the truth because people are seeing it. Friends, I'm not trying to make enemies, but I'm not up here to make friends either. I want to tell you the truth. I don't want you to rage at me. I don't want to get you all upset at me. I want you, I want you to know the truth and to see the truth so that you will obey the truth. That's what I want. And I hope I'm not going to mess myself up right here because I'm afraid that's going to open up on that. That's exactly what I was afraid of. Uh... I hope you will, will understand that we're doing this out of love. Now, what I'm going to try to show you right now in the short time that we have, I just closed it out again, is I was going to try to show you some information where you can listen to the gospel being preached 24-7. That's really what I'm wanting to do. Uh, can you send me a, a link, Mark, because I'm really having a hard time doing this. Uh, here we go. I, I think I'll do it here. All right, friends, what I want to show you is I want to show you, give you a website for a uh, radio station, an online radio station that can that you can listen to 24-7. And I didn't have time to, to build a, uh, uh, a, a page for it to show you, but in the short time I have left, I want you to go to kqmk.net, kqmk.net. And what that is, that's a radio station where, uh, actually, that's, not, that, that's just one of the radio stations. That, that is a station that plays good, clean music, and it is uh, laced with good gospel preaching, but also... There's a website, uh, Mike, if you're watching, if you'll send me, I don't know if I have this, I uh, uh, want to find this bookmark here. I want you to uh, go to this page and you can find uh, Preachy 24-7. See if I find it here, I think I got it. It is...
Is is Mike? Mike, are you watching? Guess not. Uh, Johnny, if you're watching, I'm trying to find the uh, station that's playing. I'll get the information for you. Let's just forget that. But KQMK is an internet radio, and we're broadcasting it in Eden. So if you're in Eden and you're listening to 17, you're listening to 1710 AM, we're broadcasting in Eden, and it will... Uh, give you some information about other places you can go. You can uh, download apps and listen to them on your radio. You can watch them on, uh, listen to them online. And eventually we're going to be uh, streaming all of our programming, uh, archiving them. They'll be, they'll be able to show. Uh, you can watch these programs on the, on the Internet. Uh, that's down the line. But right now it's, it's purely radio. But we're trying to make... Uh, information available to you 24-7 because we love you and we care for you and we're concerned about your soul. Don't hate us, friends. Don't hate us. We're not trying to, we're not trying to make enemies. But as Paul said in Galatians 4, verse 16, have it become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I want you to know we really care about you. Here's how you can reach us. If you uh, are in the Eden area, we meet at 250 the Boulevard. And you can reach me at 276-340-2653 or a word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you are in the Martinsville area, 823 Starling Avenue, or 120 American Legion in Danville, and I hope that you will meet with, meet with them. If you're listening on the radio or watching online, we encourage you to find uh, uh, a, uh, or get in touch with me. And we'll help you find a congregation of God's people, the Church of Christ that's near you. We'll be glad to do that for you. Friends, I want to remind you of the tent meeting. I don't have a promo up for it, but the tent meeting is going to be, starts Monday, June 17th, goes through June the 28th, I believe. Is that right, Mark? And, and uh, June 17th through the whatever. Just come out June 17th, every night, 7 o'clock. No, no, uh, no collections, plenty of questions. Bring your preacher, bring your pastor, bring your bishop, rabbi, whoever it is. We'll have questions and answers every night. Also, television every night. Uh, I understand television every night till midnight. So, so come out and be with your friends in the Church of Christ. Don't be mad. Don't be hating us. Love us and appreciate us because we're trying to do something good for you, and that is give you a word from the Lord. Thanks for watching, friends. Hope to see you at the tent. Have a good night. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you We got a lot of things to cover on what's happening in today's news. Charles Wells has a uh, fire that he covered earlier today. We're going to do that in just a little bit. And we've also got news coming out of Danville that the woman who was missing, she was missing the Danville Police Department. And